Hello. In this video, I am going to show you how to configure a Windows 7 computer to allow remote desktop access. And we'll do that on a virtual Windows 7 computer running inside of VMware Player. We'll also show you on a different Windows 7 virtual computer running inside of VMware Player how to configure the remote desktop connection software and actually make a connection to the computer we configured to allow a remote desktop access connection. So we're going to start by working with BK-CL1, which is a computer we would like to make a remote desktop access connection to. We'll click on the Start button and right click on Computer and left click on Properties. This opens my system properties. From here I can click on the Advanced System Settings and then go to the Remote tab. On the Remote tab I can allow remote assistance connections to this computer. So we'll check that box and if we click the Advanced button this allows the computer to be controlled remotely and we can set the maximum amount of time invitations can remain open. So let's just change it from the default value of 6 to 12 hours and click OK. What this means is, as an end user, I can invite somebody else, such as a help desk, to remotely join me and assist me. Down below here we have remote desktop and if I allow connections from computers running any version of remote desktop and click OK, I'm now essentially setting it up to allow a connection from a different computer. So if I go to BK-CL2, click on Start, click on All Programs, click on Accessories, and then click on the Remote Desktop Connection link. I can type the computer name in BK-CL1 as a computer I would like to connect to. If I click the Options button, I've got a few options that I can set up to assist me and make my connection a little better experience. If I click the display tab, I can change the screen resolution size to smaller or much larger. I can go full screen all the way down to 640 by 480. I'd like to be 800 by 600 pixels. I can also change the color depth. Right now we're at 32-bit and I'll leave it at 32-bit color. If I click the local resources tab, I have the ability to connect my printers and clipboard on CL2 while I'm using a desktop on CL1. And if I click the More button, I have the ability to connect my C drive or drives that I plug in later, or an optical drive or a floppy disk drive. I only have a C drive, so I'm fine with that selection. If I click OK and then go to the Experience tab, on the Experience tab, I'm going to change my speed from low speed broadband to LAN, 10 Mbps or higher. And you'll see that a LAN connection allows desktop background, font smoothing, desktop composition, and an overall better experience. So in summary, I'm going to connect to BK-CL1. And over here, this is BK-CL1. I've allowed the connection. So from BK-CL2, let's click the Connect button. And we have to connect and provide a password for the connection. And click on OK. This may take a little time to secure a remote connection, so I'm going to fast forward this. OK, now we're connected. You will have seen that during the connection phase, BK-CL1 was logged off and BK-CL2 connected to BK-CL1 and we can minimize that. We're on BK-CL2 and we can maximize that. So we now have a connection to BK-CL1 from the BK-CL2 computer. And if we click on the Start button and open Notepad and click on File, Open, we now have additional disk drives available to us. We've got the C drive for BK-CL1, but we also have the C drive on BK-CL2. 
So I have the ability to use either disk drives, the one on the local computer, the one I'm using remote desktop connection on, or the disk drive located on the remote computer, the one I'm connected to. So I'm going to go ahead and cancel this and close Notepad, and then I'm going to log off of BK-CL1. The best way to do this is to click the Start button and choose Log Off. So this concludes my presentation on how to configure a computer to allow a remote desktop access connection as well as how to make a remote desktop connection to a remote computer. This is BrickHouseLabs.com and thank you very much for watching.